So condo, so rules and regulations, condo docs, master, you know, master deed. Um, that's we do sell a lot of condos at the Frizoco Group. So let's just kind of let's dive into that a little bit today here and, and talk about uh, rules and regulations and condo docs. So, Joe, what are some common rules and regulations of condo associations out here? Condo, condo rules and regulations. Um, let's start with, so like noise, not so much a noise ordinance, um, but noise. So you, you're in a condo complex, a lot of times you'll see, you know, if, you know, no loud music after 10 o'clock on the weekdays or 11 o'clock on the weekends. If, if the condo, if the complex has a pool, you know, pool hours are 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. or dawn to dusk, you know, depending on what they have, you know, if they even have a lifeguard on duty or anything to that nature. Um, pet restrictions that, you know, pets have become a huge part of of people's lives, you know, nowadays, you know, in, in the shore life and it becomes this, well, I have cats or I have dogs. And, you know, when I go away or if I'm going to come here for the summer, I'm taking my dogs with me. I'm bringing my cat with me. Is there, is, is there a restriction? One, are you allowed to have pets? Okay, great. Let's check the box and say you're allowed to have pets. Two, is there a number of pets that you're allowed to have? Check that box. Three, is there a size restriction? So yeah, you can have pets, you can have dogs, but you can't have a dog over 30 pounds. Okay, so you have to kind of fall within that guideline. Well, I have a, you know, I have a, I, I've got a 100 pound lab. Well, then that community, that building isn't going to work for you. Now you can get into the whole, it's an emotional support dog. It's a service animal that you can, you can battle that with the association if you want to once you're in. That's something... You know, you can't really, we can't really speak to, um, but the pets, that's a big deal with regards to, you know, rules and regs or restrictions on their noise, uh, pool hours. Um, you know, another thing too is grilling. Are you allowed to grill on your deck? You know, or is there a, just an area within your community? Like if you're in a condo complex, is there an area that you have like three or four grills that are community grills? You know that uh, that you can do all your cooking down there, but you can't have your own personal grill, say, on your deck or in your garage, because maybe they don't allow you to store propane tanks in a garage. You know, I don't know. So all those types of things, those will be laid out in your rules and regulations. You know, we talk about condo fees a little bit too. We can get into that a little bit a little bit more. Um, but sometimes, some you know, an association may have. Your condo fees are based on the size of your unit. So, okay, if you're a 1,400 square foot condo, an 800 square foot, and a 500 square foot, well, the 1,400 square foot condo pays a percentage more of the condo fee than you know the the five 800 square foot condo. So, but those would all that would all be structured and laid out within your um, within your master deed, within your within your bylaws and and. Uh, in rules, not so much your rules and regulations, but your condo, your condo docs and your bylaws, that kind of stuff would be laid out. Yeah. Yeah. Is it like a common time for, for like quiet hours? Well, look, I, I think a lot of times it also has to do with common sense. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, you know, if you live in a, if you're in a condo building, um, you know, it, it's, it's a respect thing too. You're, they're your neighbor. I mean, sure. you're, if you're not on the end, well, someone's living on either side of you. So, you know, you just, it's, it's a respect thing. But most of the time, there is usually like a, you know, loud music type or, you know, the pool area is open, usually a 9, 10, 11 o'clock, something like that. Is there, um, like, what about the fees? Okay. What, what, what would be like a common or maybe like an average fee that you yeah. might get per month. Sure. Great question. You know, condo fees are, you know, condo fees are, there's a big range of, of, of dollars when it comes to your condo fees. And I, I think a lot of times it also comes down to your association. 
you know, what time, what type of association do you want to be? Do you want to be very solvent and that there's a percentage of your condo fees that come in on a monthly basis or quarterly basis, however it's structured, uh, that go towards your, they go towards the association. Um, you know, there's a slush fund that they have that, that is always just, you know, for one of those, you know, oh my God, that just happened and it has to be paid for. Or are you in more of a, you know, they talk about pay to play, so are you in a more of a pay to live community where, okay, we're gonna keep your condo fees very minimal. Um, however, if anything comes up, let's just say hypothetically, I mean, they're called special assessments. You have to replace a roof in a building. Well, everyone pays for that, not just the person on the top floor. Everybody pays for that. And if you don't really, if you're not very solvent and you don't really have, you know, a lot of money in your association, every time something like that may come up, the homeowners are going to be, you know, they're going to be grant, you know, given a, a special assessment. And again, it's going to be a percentage of, so if it's, you know, $10,000 special assessment, there's 10 units, it's $1,000 a, a, a unit, you know. Um, yeah. So th that's also, that can be a common way to do business too. But so, so your fee in itself is going to depend on, and it also depends on your amenities. You know, if, if you're just a condo complex and, you know, there's, let's say there's 12 units, but you don't, you just, you don't really have anything there. You have a, you've got sort of like a courtyard, you know, and, and a couple of grills. Well, you're probably not going to have these massive condo fees. There's not a lot of amenities there that need to be taken into consideration. Well, now you're a condo complex and, or a community and you've got two pools, security, um, tennis court, you know, there's a bunch of stuff that are in there, you know. Um, are you on the water? Yeah. Do you have boat slips and bulkheads that need to be maintained? You know, you're carrying different insurances that's, that, uh, you know, if you're in the middle of the island, you're carrying different insurances than you would be if you were on, on the bay. So, again, that's going to fluctuate your, your, to your monthly nut, what that's going to be. Yeah. So. How can condo owners get involved in their condo association? So most, well, your association does have a board. Okay. okay? Uh, there are some associations that have a property management company that oversees the complex. Okay. Over, oversees the building, oversees the neighborhood. Um, and then you have your board. Okay. So the board is, is, is comprised of homeowners. Um, usually there's an odd number, three or five, you know. Um, and so those, they usually meet on a, you know, usually a bi-monthly, quarterly basis, the association has a call. And they'll have a call maybe with their property management company. Like the property management company is there to maintain the, maintain the neighborhood or maintain the building. If something goes wrong and they need something fixed, the property management company could, you know, put out to bid, you know, the job that you want. And so they kind of, you know, they collect your condo dues, they keep your books, you know. Um, and then there are associations that they don't want a property management company because you do have to pay for it. So, you know, we're going to we're going to keep our condo fees lean and mean. So, we're not going to have a property management company. Uh so we don't have that expense. So, they then have to collect condo fees. They need to keep a budget. They need to keep minutes. Um if something goes wrong and let's say you're going to get a new roof, well, they need to put that out to bid. So, they need to find two, three roofing companies that they're going to put that out to bid for. Um so, you know, that's, that's a way that your association can keep down its costs. But to be involved with your association, you can be on the board. Um, being on the board, I give a lot of credit to people that are on their condo board. It's a thankless job. I, I, will just, I will just say that. It's a thankless job. Everyone else can do it better, but yet nobody wants to be on the board. But they can all do it better. I'm just... I just, I, that's what I've seen over decades of, of, of living in different condo complexes and stuff. And they, they do what they can. It's volunteer. No one gets paid to be on their board, you know. Um, they do the best they can. But if, you know, if you want to be involved in your community and you, you kind of want to have a say with what's going on, uh, you know, within your community, within your building, within your association, you can certainly be on the board. You can also go to your meetings, Voice your opinion. 
you know. Um, but I guess if you wanted to have a, a more of a impactful, you could get on your board. Get on the board. We know there are challenges with living no matter where you go. Mm -hmm. And we also know that you get to see everything that you're agreeing to before you actually buy the condo. You sure. Know, you get to see it all. But what sometimes are challenges of, uh, you know, living with a condo association? If you don't like your neighbors or the neighbors don't like you. At, at the end of the day, you've got, you could have, a, you could have two units that are a condo association, which is just a side by side or an up and down. You could have, you know, 100, 200 um, owners in an association. So it really does become, you know, can't we all get along, you know, <laughs> um, type of thing. You know, some, you're going to most likely have your cliques, you know, um, that usually probably happens within, you know, smaller communities. You know, you've got four or five families that uh, that just kind of, they're here, you know, and you've got your four or five families over here. Um, but I would probably say that that's the most, that's the biggest unknown. Yeah. When you go into a, when you go into an association, and again, whether it's just a building, a neighborhood, a community, um, it's, you know, it's the people that, uh, that live there before you do. What, yeah. What's that, what is that going to be like? Because like you said, you, you know, you go to a complex you go to a neighborhood, you're walking around. If they've got a clubhouse with a pool, you go down, you see it, you know. Um, you know, if they've got an area that, you know, is, is for, you know, pets, you know, to relieve themselves or whatever, and they have a separate, you know, there's an area in the community that pets do that. You know, if they've got, um, if there's a gym or something and there's times for it or there's times for the pool when it's open, if there's designated parking for guests, like you see all that when you're there. So yeah. it's not, I mean, you've physically seen Shouldn't that. Shouldn't be a surprise. <laughs> yeah, you're not interviewing every single owner that lives there <laughs> before you do. Right. You know, I mean, goodness gracious, even if you buy, a, if you buy in a community or, you know, that, that has boat slips, for the most part, you probably have a pretty good idea where your boat slip's going to be in the marina. You, you even kind of have an idea of that. You don't know what your neighbor that's probably the biggest thing. We so there's a lot of great attributes to, to th there's a lot of good benefits to living in a condo community, in a complex, in a building. Um, but there's also some downsides to that. So, you know, I think anytime you're, gonna, you're, you're looking to move forward with any kind of a condo, as I say, complex community building purchase, you're communicating that with your agent at the Frizoco group to get, you know, get the information that you can, get the rules and regulations, get the bylaws, um, get that information up front. Or if you go to the community and you really like it, get a copy of the bylaws, get a copy of the rules and regulations, find out what it's all about, and then talk to me, Chris, Sandra, Natalie, Mary, and make your offer.